Okay, hello and welcome back. And what I want to do in this video, uh, as we start to think more broadly about species interactions and their different kinds, is remind us of uh, a little bit of the taxonomy of ways in which species might interact that you've probably seen in, in a biology or ecology class before. But just as a reminder, we often think about categorizing the ways in which species do interact according to who benefits or does not benefit from these interactions. So, if, for example, if we think about two species, we can think about categories of interactions where both species actually um, are negatively affected, so don't gain any benefit or actually like uh, impaired in growth or fitness by the interaction. Often we think of those as competition. So for example, we've seen many examples of, of this this semester, but you know, dung beetles uh, fighting for precious resources wouldn't be an example of uh, where you actually have negative effects on both partners. If both partners, oh, and I should say, uh, these are labeled here as species, but of course competition can also happen within species. So this could also be, um, particularly for competition, individuals within a species. So again, if we think of the opposite of competition, we might think of interactions where both partners benefit, and we often call these mutualisms. So, for example, the interaction between plants and pollinators, the plants get something, they get a reproductive benefit, and the pollinators get food, so their own fitness is improved. So that is a, a mutual benefit to both partners. But we can also think of interactions where, and we've heard about many interactions where one partner benefits, but the other does not. And these are generally, we can consider them antagonistic interactions, and we've already seen many examples of this. Of course, predation, um, parasitism, as shown here, or herbivory are examples where one partner is consuming or gaining a resource at the cost of the other partner. So antagonistic of one partner is benefiting, but the other is not. And those three sort of competition mutualisms and antagonistic interactions we can think of as, in some ways, the stronger interactions. But there are also interactions that still are important, but maybe aren't so strong or are strongly asymmetric. So. Um, <clears throat> For example, here there's a nice example of uh, an ibex and a weevil that actually feed on the same plant. And as you might suspect, the ibex actually don't care much about, there, there aren't any strong defensive effects from weevils, so ibex aren't really affected by uh, the presence of weevils, but weevils on the other hand are negatively affected by the presence of the ibex, both through direct damage and also through reduction of that resource. So one partner unaffected, uh, the other partner negatively affected is amensalism. You can also see the opposite, um, where one partner might benefit, but the other partner is unaffected. And there can be a little bleed sometimes between, for example, commensalism and mutualism. So here's a nice example um, uh, where a, a cactus and an ant mutualism, where, or uh, uh, interaction, not necessarily mutualism, uh, where the cactus is providing extra floral nectaries or providing a food resource, uh, that the ants feed on. You might think that that would be a mutualism, but it turns out when uh, some researchers looked closely, there are actually, there are some positive benefits to the plant. So the, the plant does get some protection from sort of housing these ants and encouraging their, their density on the cactus, but there are also some negative effects of having these ants around. Um, so there's the costs of producing uh, the sugars that go into the extra floral nectaries, um, but also a reduction in pollinate, pollinator visitation. So it turns out from the plant side, this is sort of a wash. There are some positive effects and there are some negative effects. Um, so, so really not a net benefit to the plants, but the ants, on the other hand, are in definitely getting a benefit. They are getting food, a house, and um, so this sort of asymmetric relationship that is positive for one partner, but um, neutral for the other. So that's commensalism. And the last, in some ways, sort of bookkeeping, but we can think of neutralism being no real substantial effects on either partner, but two species that coexist. So, uh, for example, two, two species that are in the same environment, but aren't strongly, positively, or ne negatively interacting would be neutralism. And so what we're going to dive into in the next couple videos is really exploring one very strongly researched kind of interaction that is competition. And particularly, uh, Claudio is going to walk you through what we know and the sort of importance of competition between herbivores and whether or not that happens and, and whether or not it happens in the way uh, our theories would predict it would happen.